Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and it's Saturday but I'm gonna do a Friday Reads video. This is what I would have filmed yesterday had I had a chance to film and I'm just still gonna call it Friday Reads. So this is basically the books that I finished during the last seven days and um, just want to tell you about them. So it's been a weird reading month already and this week even has just been kind of weird because I have had um, two books that I rated two stars just this week and then um, another book that I'm certain will be one of my top five favorite books of the year. And earlier this month I had another book that I'm certain will be one of my top five favorite books of the year. And also this month I have DNF'd a book, which I don't usually do. So it's just been kind of a weird all around reading month. And um, I will just remind you of what I did not finish because I still have it checked out from the library. And it's the uh, Can You Forgive Her a book by Anthony Trollope that Steve Donahue is hosting the read along of. And um, I just, I tried, I got to a little over 100 pages and not only did I have to set it aside to read my book club book, I just am not interested enough to go back to it and I feel bad. I don't usually DNF books but you know I will say it's possible I could go back to it at some point but I have so many other things that I'm interested in reading that I don't see it happening at least not anytime soon. So uh, the other book that I really um, well, it's the, it's the book club book. I had to put the uh, Trollope book aside to read this next one. And I was really just bored to death with it. <laughs> or I shouldn't say bored to death. I'm still alive. But uh, really, really seriously bored with this book. And even our librarian who facilitates book club and most of the book club members didn't enjoy it either. And our librarian said, yeah, I probably picked the wrong book by that author. Should have gone with something different. But what we read was The Buccaneers by Edith Wharton and I think probably what was wrong with this is that she wasn't able to finish it. She died before she finished it so it didn't get the polishing and the editing that you know and the finishing that it needed. Now I think it was originally released in 1938. This edition is from 1993 and it was actually completed by an author named Marion Mainwaring. Now I bought it on Audible and I'm probably going to return it if I can. Um, not knowing that the Audible edition is just the Edith Wharton parts and then it has a little synopsis at the end which pretty much summed up the whole book and I could have saved myself a lot of hours had I known I could just listen to that little synopsis at the end and understand the book finally and, and kind of figure out exactly what happened. Um, but when I got to the end of the Audible edition and realized that this book, why it still had 100 pages left was because it was actually finished by another author. I went ahead because it was book club. I sat down and I read the last 100 pages. Those 100 pages I kind of enjoyed uh, to an extent, uh, much more than the first part of the book. So I don't know if it's just because it was historical or because it was actually boring or because that our author writing style is just not for me or if it, or if it wasn't or if it was just because it wasn't finished and polished. I don't know. But all of those things work together to make it really not a very enjoyable book, at least for me. So I'm not saying that I wouldn't read this author again. Um, maybe I would read Age of Innocence or Ethan Fromm or something like that um, and give her another a shot. So, but this book, The Buccaneers, I did not care for. A uh, quick synopsis. It, there are some uh, young ladies from New York who are from new money, so they're not being accepted into society. So their mothers send them to England to try to marry well, and they marry a duke and a lord and just different people like that to try to up their social status. So um, that all was really pretty boring, and it was hard to follow too because for each of the five young ladies, they all had a nickname and then when they got married they had a married name and then sometimes you know it would they could legitimately each person could have like four names and you never it was just hard to follow and then their mothers had you know names all these different names and um because every like i said everybody had a nickname and everybody had um a, you know, a married name and a given name and a maiden name and it's just hard keeping everybody straight. Uh, finally though, the last hundred pages centered around one of the young ladies 
who um, did something rather scandalous. And so that's what the last hundred pages was about. And that was actually pretty interesting. So, um, you know, if I had to read it again, I might get it a little more now that I've seen the end. You know, I, I might be able to follow it better, but I don't know. I'm not really interested in going back to it. Uh, I had another book that I rated two stars and for completely different reasons. I listened to an abridged version of Your Oasis on Flame Lake by Lorna Landvik. This is my third Lorna Landvik book and um, I went ahead and listened to this abridged version on audio on Hoopla because that's what was available and I thought well if I like it then I can always go back and read the full edition and I didn't really like it. It was it just made me feel icky. It was too angsty. These uh, women were unhappy in their marriages, and so there was affairs, and and not just the women. I mean, there were men too, obviously. If there was affairs, um, and they just seemed to try to justify it like that was okay, which it's. I personally don't think it's okay. And um, there was one interesting storyline about one of their daughters and how she wanted her stepfather to uh, adopt her, and and some different things going on with her and her life. That was. A little more interesting but I just didn't care for it enough it's not my type of book and uh, I thought it was well narrated the author herself narrated it and she did a great job she's got a fun accent it's like um, either Michigan or Wisconsin or Minnesotan or something like that is, is her accent and um, uh, I thought it was cute I enjoyed hearing her but I didn't really care for the book so then um, the books that I finished this week that I did enjoy I finally finished the last Sunshine State book for this school year and appropriately so because the new list was just announced and so I am really looking forward to moving into those books but sometime during middle grade May I will do a wrap-up video of all 15 of the books from this current school year. This was really neat. It brought up a lot of historical references to the Cold War and um, and about the, the fears that people had that there was going to be a nuclear attack and, um, you know, building bunkers underground and it has something to do with that. But there were parts of it that were a little slow, but I thought it was very interesting, very intriguing. And um, I, I don't want to tell you much about it, but I will just say that it does involve some underground places and interesting things and it was very intense uh, I enjoyed it so uh, I I gave it four stars I think of all of this year's Sunshine State list this is one of the top five for me uh, that I enjoyed the most then the book I loved the most and uh, this will definitely be in my top five for the year uh, is the um, uh, a I'm sorry not the a gentleman in Moscow by Amar Tolls Count Rostov in this book, he's going to be my book boyfriend. <laughs> you know, you do those tags where, you know, it's, it'll, some of the times it's, you know, they're written by teenagers and they say, you know, who's your favorite book boyfriend? And I'm thinking, I never have that. Well, now I do. He's so endearing and fantastic and wonderful. Such a great literary character. But yet, when I think about what happened in the book, not that much really happened that is all that earth shattering as far as him inside the hotel. Basically, it's about this uh, count who at the age of around 32, right after the Russian Revolution, he is sentenced to live out his life in the Metropole Hotel, which is right across the street from the Kremlin. I understand that it is a real place. And so it's just about his life in the hotel. And it's fantastic. I just loved it. So I don't want to say a whole lot about it. I just thought it was great and, uh, and highly recommend it. And then um, I wanted to tell you about, well, I don't know what I did with it. Uh, oh, it fell. Oh, well, okay, hold on just a second. I thought I would also share with you what my husband has just read this week because he laid this book on the counter and said, you can return this to the library today if you're going. It's The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. And I've been seeing this on Hoopla, on audio, and I've thought about uh, listening to it. So I just wondered if any of you guys have read it and what you think. I didn't get a chance to ask my husband if he enjoyed it, but it looks like something that I would like. And I love this type of self-help self -help book. So um, I may pick this up myself. Probably not in the next month or two, but at some point in the future. So that is what my husband just finished. <clears throat> All right. I want to show you a couple of non-bookish things. But 
two of them are from my sister. So Charlotte, if you're watching this, just go ahead and exit out of this video because I'm going to sign out after this. But I want to show you guys what I got because it's they're so cute. So um, if my sister is not watching anymore, I will show you. I found these at Joanne Fabric. The bigger ones were only $1.99 and they're so cute. It, look at the measuring tape handles. So many things to do. And that looks like the old Betty Crocker on the bag. And then a little one that I think was $1.59. So much fabric, so little time. So this is a take on Laura from Mom to Triplets 04's. Um, the saying that she loves so much, so many books, so little time. And then for me, I got one cat short of crazy, which is adorable. So, uh, so I just wanted to show you those because they're fun. So that's it. That's all I have for this video. I hope you are having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.